Today we're going to talk about Judas. We're in the book of Matthew, 26th chapter, starting with verse 2. <clears throat> Jesus told his disciples, You know, the Passover takes place after two days, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Skipping forward to verse, verse 14. One of the twelve, a man called Judas, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? So they weighed out thirty pieces of silver for him. And from that time he started looking for a good opportunity to betray Jesus. Just get a little forward, they're eating dinner together, Jesus and the disciples, and while they're eating. Jesus says, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. <clears throat> the one who dipped his hand with me in the bowl, he will betray me. The Son of Man will go, just as it is written about him. But woe to the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for him if he had never been born. Jesus, his betrayer, replied, Surely not, Rabbi. You have said it, Jesus told him. Jesus knew that he had to die. He went to God about it. He said, I really don't want to do this, but if it's the only way, then let's get after it. Jesus also knew that Judas was going to be the one to set him up. And knowing that, he knew that Judas betrayed him. He knew that Judas was going to sell him out for 30 pieces of silver. We could do the math and figure out how much money that is today, but it's not much. Um, but when they had dinner together, Judas still sat at that table. Judas still ate with Jesus. Jesus still washed Judas' feet. That's just a testament to show that God's love cannot change for you. It cannot, he, he, physically, there's no way for him to love us any more than he does right now. And he refuses, no matter what our actions are, to love us any less. Judas is the reason Jesus got strung up on that cross. And so am I, and so are you, and all of our mistakes. And he's not going to love us any less because we make mistakes. Everybody likes to quote John 3.16, but John 3.17 says that Jesus came to this earth not to condemn us, but to save us. So when we think that we've messed up, we think that we've done too much, and we think that we've, you know, screwed up too bad, we've got a God that his love doesn't change just got to draw near to him. You've got to cry out to him and repent of that. And just like Judas, he'll wash your feet and he'll wash you clean. That's what I've got today. Would anybody like to add to that? I mean, I've just like anyone in the past, I've done some stuff, and I've, like I've told you, I've grown up in church my whole life. I never didn't believe in God, but I didn't like that as kid, I was forced to go to church if I didn't want to go. Um, I think that he knew that he was there, but in the back of my mind, and I think that my experience over the wintertime was his way of saying, hey, I'm here, you need to come back. Right? Absolutely. I agree. Jesus is a gentleman. He will knock as often as he can to let you know that he's at the door, but he's a gentleman. He's not going to force his way in. He won't do it. You have to hear that knock, and you have to be accepting of that. He's just going to be outside the door. I would say I ignored the knock for a long time. Yeah. All of us did. I did.
Dear Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you for your sacrifices, for loving us every day, regardless of our sins, forgiving our sins. We'd like to thank you for the opportunity to provide for our families today, keep us safe under traffic, keep us dry with these thunderstorms rolling in this afternoon. Keep everybody safe so we can return home to our families. I'd also like to pray for a family member of mine, a family member of Adam's, both fighting addiction. They're not in the battle alone, but they need help bigger than them. So, thanks again for the opportunity to provide for our families. And another day in the sunshine, keep us safe. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's go pave them. Let's go pave them.